tonight's presentation, we're going to continue our study of geometry. And more specifically, we're going to take a look at quadrilaterals and several types of those. And they are the four-sided polygons. When you take apart the word quadrilateral, the first part of the word is quad. And quad, you might be familiar with that. You might be thinking, hey, quad means four. And you're right, it does. Um, when, you, when you see quad in a word, for example, um, if you have a group of four rooms put together at college, it's called a quad. And if you have quadruplets, you have a group of four children or four uh, siblings. And if you take this latter part of the word in laterals, it means side. So you've got four sides, and there it is. The quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. And we really have these quadrilaterals branching off into two different families, or two different sides of this quadrilateral family. On the right side over here, we have this figure. You may, you may have seen it before, and you, you might know what it is, and good for you. And they are called trapezoids. And what's special about a trapezoid, it is a quadrilateral, like all of these figures that you'll see, all these polygons you'll see in this um, lesson are quadrilaterals. But what makes the trapezoid special is that it has one pair of parallel sides. And you can see up here on the top, and along the bottom, we have line segments that are parallel. And if you were to extend those out you know, infinitely, they would never cross. So that's that makes them parallel. So the trapezoid is the only um, quadrilateral that has one pair of parallel sides. On the other hand, you have on this side of a branch of the family, you have figures with two sets of parallel sides and they are called parallelograms they have two pairs of opposite parallel sides and you can see those we have the top and the bottom in this parallelogram are parallel and then you have the left and right sides opposite see how they're opposite from each other those are parallel as well they run infinitely and never cross or intersect. Yeah, like up here, the top and bottom ones are parallel. Same thing, never intersect. And also what's special about parallelograms, the opposite sides are equal. And you can see that they're the same length. And this pair of opposite sides, they're also the same length as each other. So we have really two pairs of sides that are equal in length. And also, if you look at the angles, if you look at this obtuse angle here, this angle that's greater than 90 degrees, and opposite that, I mean, we could call this A, and capital A, these would be equal. Those angles would be equal, as well as, you know, a lowercase b, this angle, angle b. You could write that sim symbol in there. And angle capital B would also be equal. So these are the same measure. If you were to lay down your protractor on those, you would find that they are the same measure. And also with opposite angles A and capital A, same measure. So that's a parallelogram. And everything on this branch of the quadrilateral family tree, everything under this is also a parallelogram. Uh, yes, a parallelogram. Not on this side, though. Trapezoids are, are different in that they only have one pair of parallel sides. Two pairs, one pair. One pair, two pairs. You get the idea. So if we continue down this branch of the parallelograms or the quadrilateral family tree, you see this next figure here. And you might recognize that right away. Good for you. We've been seeing these for quite a long time. You see them early in your school careers and you may have guessed that they are indeed squares mm -hmm. they are and 
what makes squares unique is that there's a combination of things here. We have all sides are equal in length. And if you look at, if you were to lay a ruler across these, you would find these to be equal in length. We could just put an example measure. Um, it could be three inches here, or well, let me just fix that inches symbol. Or well, let's use metric. Three centimeters here. This would be three centimeters. And you'll see that all sides are the same length. Equal measure. And then also you have four right angles. And we'll write the right angle symbol in there. It's kind of like a little square that fits in the corner. Square corners, right angles, 90 degree angles. And you have four of those. And that makes up a square. And again, opposite sides are parallel making it a parallelogram. So that's a square. And then if you follow this family tree down a little bit on um, these the quadrilateral family tree and the parallelogram side of it, you've got another parallelogram here. And that parallelogram, you may have guessed, looks much different than a square. And it, these are called rectangles. And once again, Rectangles have four right angles. And just like I said before, opposite angles of a parallelogram are equal. Well, you know, if we look at these opposite angles, they're equal because they're 90 degrees. And these are also equal. This should be a more of a 90 degree angle here. OK, the opposite angles here are equal at 90 degrees. And then also we have opposite sides parallel, just like in every parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. Uh, if you wanted to mark those off, we could do that. So this side would be parallel to that. They run on infinitely together, forever, without intersecting. And we have this set of parallel sides. And we could have done that for our, our square as well. This is parallel to this, this side parallel to this opposite side. So there you have rectangles. What's different? about a rectangle um, than a square. And te technically, a square is a, just a special type of rectangle. But what's different about a rectangle is that opposite sides are equal in length. You can see that the top side and the bottom side are equal in length. The left and right side are equal in length. However, they're not all the same length. So if you have a rectangle with all sides all the same length, it's really a square. All right, so we'll continue down this the parallelogram branch of the quadrilateral family tree. It's a mouthful to say, but <laughs> well, I guess we'll just continue. And you'll you'll reach this the bottom here, and you have this special fella here, um, still a parallelogram. In that opposite sides are parallel, um, and that, wow, it looks like four sides equal as well. What do you think that would be? Well, if you guessed a rhombus, you'd be right. The plural of rhombus would be a rhombi. Um, I don't want to confuse people by writing it down. I've had plural form of all of these figures so far, except for the rhombus. So anyhow, the rhombus is special. It's a special quadrilateral because um, it has two pairs of parallel sides. I mean, opposite sides are parallel just like any other parallelogram. So we'd have opposite side here being parallel, and opposite sides here being parallel as well. However, opposite sides are also equal length. So again, you might have this be, let's do um, 3 meters three meters, and all the way around, that would be three meters. And so you can see all sides are the same length. But we don't have right angles like we do with that, that square. The square has four right angles, but not a rhombus. Opposite angles are equal. I should have put that in there. Opposite angles are equal. 
um, just like any other parallelogram, but we did cover that. It is a parallelogram, so you know opposite sides, I'm sorry, opposite angles would be equal. So A would still be equal measure to angle, angle A, yeah. and then angle B would be still equal to angle capital B. So you get the, get the idea. So there we have quite a variety of quadrilaterals. We have the rhombus, the rectangles, uh, squares, all being parallelograms. And all of those are all quadrilaterals. Now, this branch um, is different than the parallel parallelograms, which have opposite sides being parallel. And that would make two pairs of opposite the parallel trapezoids, sides. The trapezoids, on the other hand, have one set of parallel sides. And one other note I should say about trapezoids is that frequently you see this form of trapezoid. And that would be an isosceles trapezoid. It has two sides equal. However, there are other forms of trapezoids. And let's try to make one here quickly. We've got, if we have a trapezoid with a right angle there, it extends out this way. And down that way, you can see that it still has um, one pair of parallel sides. The top and bottom are parallel again in this case. However, it doesn't have that nice, um, like isosceles look to it. These these sides are not equal. I mean, it could it has four sides of different lengths, and opposite sides are parallel. These top and bottom sides are parallel but not all opposite sides are parallel in a trapezoid. So there you have it. So we have our look at quadrilaterals, the four-sided polygons. Thanks for checking out Mr. Marinick's Edu blog and the Marinick video channel on YouTube, and we'll see you again next time. <laughs>